Hello, in this session, we would look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is one of the major financial statements along the income statement as well as the statement of cash flow. So if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, you will need to know everything about the balance sheet. Now, if you're specifically a CPA candidate and you're studying for your CPA, I don't replace your course. I don't replace your Wiley, your Glime, your Becker, or your Roger. What I do is I am an addition. I can be a supplemental tool because when I'm going to go over the balance sheet today, I'm going to cover the balance sheet from A to Z. So I'm going to cover everything about the balance sheet in details and a little bit more in details than a CP, typical CPA course will go over. Now, what I suggest you do, if you need additional help about this topic, as well as other topics, please check out my website. If not for anything, check out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. You can check your score by college, by section. You can check the average score and the average score per section. I also have additional courses on my website, financial accounting, managerial accounting, intermediate accounting, so on and so forth. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and like my YouTube and subscribe to the channel because I constantly update my videos. So this way, I don't want you to miss anything and connect with me on Instagram and Facebook as well. The balance sheet, sometimes referred to as the statements of financial position. Okay, so it can be called the balance sheet. It could be the statement of financial position. It reports assets, liabilities and equities and it report those at a specified time so when you look at the date of the balance sheet it's going to be one single date such as december 31st 2020 or any year so it's not as of december 31st it's not as of it's a a specified date it provides information about the resources well what are the resources the resources are the assets obligations to creditors and equity to equity and net resources. If, if you remember the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity. And you saw this so many times in my course. Assets are your resources. So it tells you wh what resources do you have, what obligations do you have, and what's the equity in the business. So what is the purpose? What's the one of the main purpose of the balance sheet? It's going to help us predict the amount, timing, and uncertainty of that magic word, future cash flow. So look at the balance sheet. It's going to tell us, it's going to help us predict the amount, when are we going to receive the money, you know, what uncertainties do we have about our future cash flow. So this is the purpose of the balance sheet. So how so? How does it help us? Well, we're going to be computing eventually rates of returns that deals with the balance sheet. And we're going to look at those later on. That's going to help us evaluate the capital structure. Now, when we say the capital structure, what do we, what do we mean by the capital structure? Well, assets equal to liabilities plus equity. Okay, liability and equity is our capital structure. Are we relying more on debt or are we re relying more on equity? Is it 50-50? Is it 40-60, 40-60, is it 60-40? So this is going to help us to ca the capital structure. And th this deals with how are we financing the company? Are we relying more on that or are we relying more on equity? And by doing so, by looking at our capital structure, it's going to help us assess our risk and our future cash flow. Because if a company relies, generally speaking, if they rely more, more on debt, generally speaking, they are a riskier company. Okay, but specifically, when we analyze the company using the balance sheet, we're going to look at three different categories, flexible liquidity, solvency, and financial flexibility. And what does each one of those mean? When we, t when we talk about liquidity, it's, um, it's generally related to the amount of time that's expected to pass until an asset is converted to a cash or a liability is paid. So basically, solve liquidity deals with short-term debt service what do we mean by this it means are you uh, are you able to finance your company or to stay afloat in the next 12 months or in a, sh in, a, in a short period of time okay until the liabilities at least the current liabilities are paid so are you going to be good in, in the short term this is what liquidity liquidity is do you have enough liquid asset to meet your 
obligations. Solvency similar, but solvency, think of it as it deals with long-term debt. And long-term debt deals with long-term, okay? Do you have the ability in the long, the long term to pay your debt as they come mature? So it's gonna help us look at this, this idea of the company. So we're gonna be looking at a ratio such as debt to equity, debt ratios, as well as long-term liquid uh, solvency ratios. And we'll look at this later on. And it's gonna tell us how how flexible is the, is the company is, okay? W what is the flexibility? For example, can the company take advantage of an opportunity if that opportunity arises? When can you take advantage of an opportunity? When It's when you have excess cash. It's when you have excess cash. Or if you don't have excess cash, you have low debt. When you have low debt and an opportunity came, guess what? Then you can respond quickly by going to the bank and taking out a loan because you are not under debt, financial financial trouble. Okay? So this is the usefulness of the of the balance sheet specifically, the usefulness of the balance sheet. So what are some of the limitation of the balance sheet? So the, the balance sheet is great, but what are some of the limitation? Well, for one thing, most assets and liabilities are reported at historical cost. And the key word is most, not all of them, because you're going to see later, a lot of our assets are reported on something other than the historical cost, maybe the fair value, maybe the not realizable method, maybe the LCM, lower of cost or market, but a lot of it's still reported at historical cost. And historical cost tells us how much we paid for it, and it doesn't change the value. So it's not very useful, okay? That's that's one that's one limitation. Um, the extensive views of judgment and estimate. A lot, lot of items on the uh, on the balance sheet we use estimates and judgments. Like when we do depreciation. Well, guess what? Depending on the method that we're using, it's gonna give us the depreciation amount. Or when we estimate bad debt expense. Or when we estimate our liabilities for warranties. So th there's a lot of estimates that goes on the balance sheet. So. Well, if there's estimate, there's a room for error, there's a room for mistakes, but we do what we can. But part, once you have an estimate, it, it may not be 100% um, accurate. This is, this is the point. And many items, many items of financial values are omitted. Like what? Like, for example, think about your workforce. Your workforce may be your greatest asset or maybe your R&D personnel. Guess what? Those items don't appear on the balance sheet. Maybe your customer base. You have an excellent customer base. You have a loyal customer base. You have a good reputation. Okay? But those are very hard to quantify assets. So you really cannot put them on the balance sheet as those are my assets. Well, you can't. So there are some assets that are missing. Okay? So you can show some assets, but not, not all the company's assets. And this is where the role of analysts, the role of uh, um, business uh, business experts that will go into the company, talk to management, and find out uh, what they are doing and how well they are running the company. This is how uh, um, uh, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Mr. Buffett, analyzes a company. He looks at soft assets, assets that don't appear on the balance sheet. Management is the management uh, competent. <laughs> so those are assets, those are assets that don't appear on the balance sheet. Identify the major classification of the balance sheet. So what are the major classification? We already talked about them, assets, liabilities, and equities, and hopefully you know what an asset is, probable future economic benefit obtained or controlled by a certain entity as a result of a past transaction. Liabilities are probable future sacrifices, so assets are benefit, liabilities are sacrifices of economic benefit, usually cash, you sacrifice cash, arising from present obligation, you have an obligation to transfer an asset or provide a service, this is when you have an obligation, either you have to give them cash or you have to provide a service in the future, and usually you do this in the future, as a result of past transaction. So liability is something happened in the past, created a current obligation, so it has a past current and future aspect. So something happened in the past, you borrowed money, now you have a current obligation, you have to pay in the future. And the difference between assets and liabilities, assets minus liabilities equal to equity, and this is the residual interest in the asset of the entity that remains after deducting its liabilities. In business enterprise, the equity, whatever remained, 
should be the ownership interest so whatever remained is supposedly this is the value that goes to the shareholders so if we only have one shareholder it goes to the whole shareholder now the relationship between assets liabilities and equities were covered in chapter 3 okay so if you're not sure just go back just keep going back in my lectures or go to chapter 3 in my channel and take a look at how equity is created so on and so forth but now we're going to be looking at the classification of the balance sheet and again, it's gonna, you're going to feel as if I'm going through a list of items, and I will, because that's the only way I can go through this chapter. So we're going to look at assets. We're going to look at current assets, long-term assets, PP&E, intangible assets, and other assets. Generally speaking, generally speaking, this is how a company reports their assets in these five categories. Some, so you could look at them as two categories also. And what I mean by two categories, either long-term, uh, current or non-current. So everything else is non-current and you have your current assets. And at current assets are what? We're gonna look at each one of them separately. And liabilities, they have two categories, current and long-term. And equity, we have three main section of equity. We have more, but I will see that. So in practice, you would usually see little departure of these major subdivision. Most companies, that's how they break down their balance sheets, current and non-current current let's start with current assets define what a current asset is and after we define what a current asset is look at what what is included what what is included in that section okay so current assets are what current assets are cash and other assets generally speaking cash is a current asset that a company expect to convert into cash sell or consume either in one year or in the operating cycle, whichever is longer, would always assume that one year is longer than the operating cycle. We're using with a one-year operating cycle. So what are we saying? Current assets are things that's going to be either converted to cash, sold, or consumed. They're going to be gone in one year. What are some examples of those assets? Okay. And those assets, if you really think about it, they deal with liquidity. They're, they're going to tell us do we have enough liquid assets? Liquid is how fast could you turn something into cash? Do we have enough to pay off our current liabilities? And on the balance sheet, they are listed in the in the order of liquidity. Cash is the most liquid. Short-term investments comes next. One, two, three. Those three are considered the most liquid. Then four is your inventory. Five, prepaid. And if you have supplies, supplies will be there. So again, those are the assets that's going to help you uh, pay your short-term obligation. Do you have enough of those? This is what the current assets are showing us. Do you have enough of those that you can survive in the, in the near future? Okay. And how do we report them? How do we report them? The, so how do we report them on the balance sheet? Cash and cash equivalent is the fair value. If you have $100,000 in cash, it's $100,000 in cash. So if you have it in euros, you'll convert it into dollar and that's the fair value. Short-term investments, generally speaking, you'd report them at fair value. And we have a whole chapter about investments, but generally speaking, if you have short-term investments, you report them at fair value. Receivable are reported as the estimated amount collectible. So it's, they are reported at how much you will expect to get for them. This is called NRV or net realizable value, NRV or net realizable value. So you'll have an inventory receivable, then you will see how much to, uh, how much of it you'll be expected to collect. And for each one of them, we're going to have a chapter. For example, for cash, just kind of walk you through this because this is the, for cash, oops, sorry, for cash, for cash and receivable, we're going to have one chapter. We're going to have one chapter for inventory, one chapter for investment. So eventually we're going to cover each one of those in details. But receivable, that's how it's reported. Inventory is reported at something called LCM, lower of cost or market. So that's another method that we will use. And prepaid expenses are reported at cost. So notice what I said when we started this. I said most are reported at cost. So the only thing in these... It, is reported at cost is the prepaid and generally the prepaid is not really a big a large number in any company so notice there is we are going further and further from we are going further and further from the cost okay we're using other bases to value the asset and what is LCM lower of cost or market 
we'll see that later on we'll see that later on I just note we use LCM lower of cost or market so what is the correct order to present the current assets well cash is obviously the first then after cash what comes next not inventory inventory is not does not come next because it's not as liquid so account receivable account receivable they're both right uh, then between now we have so we have cash account receivable that sounds right then between prepaid and inventory no nope, prepaid is not inventory is more liquid than prepaid than prepaid so the answer will be B but between cash and account receivable if we have investments it's gonna be investments if we do have investments so this is just an example of uh, of uh, of a multiple choice question it's the in, in order of liquidity which one can we convert into cash the fastest okay so let's look at cash and what is considered cash generally any money available on demand is considered cash okay now we always say cash and cash equivalents what are cash equivalents what are cash equivalents cash equivalents are short-term highly liquid investments that mature within three months or less so it could be US Treasury okay for example you 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 lend the government money for three months or for six months but now there's three months is less a three month is remained for this uh, for the bond to mature so any highly liquid investments that mature within three months again we're talking about US Treasury bills Treasury bills okay and uh, restriction or commitment must be disclosed so if, if you have any restriction or commitment on your cash account you must disclose it for example here we're gonna look at this company just we're gonna look at some samples um, as we're working through this so you, this way you'll have an idea what a balance sheet looks like and what type of description or notes do we need to attach to the, the to the numbers so we have we have Altera Healthcare Corp that's their cash position 18 million and some change restricted cash and investments they have 7.1 million almost 7.2 million so now when they have something restricted they have to tell you why is it restricted so look at note 7 note 7 it says we have restricted cash and investments consist of CDs certificate of deposit as collateral for lease agreement and debt service with interest rate ranging from 4 to 5 percent so what they're saying is this they have cash of 18 million 18.7 that's free and clear and they have some restricted cash for 7.2 million and they tell you why the cash is restricted as an investor as a creditor you need to know why do they have restriction and they're telling us here they have it in a form of a CD uh, a collateral for a lease agreement and debt service so basically the bank tells them for me to lend you money you have to deposit some money and keep it on hold and this is why therefore the cash is not free it's restricted so if they combine those two together it will appear as they if they have that's 25 around 26 million and they don't have to want they do have 26 million but 7.2 million of it they cannot really touch okay so they have to tell you that's the case um, this is another example of current assets for owing corporation so they have this is cash and this is restricted securities again you would look at note 23 and sometimes you might have other restricted securities um, under other assets and here this is how they you could read this just to see how sometime they have restriction on certain investments the insurance settlements fund are held and invested by the fire board settlement trust and are available to satisfy depending and future asbestos related liabilities okay these assets of the trust are comprised of cash and marketable securities and are reflected as Owen scoring consolidated balance sheet as restricted assets okay so those are restricted securities and they're telling you why they're restricted it's uh, it's to pay asbestos liabilities okay so if there's any restriction you have to tell us what what's the restriction is all about short-term investments again we're not gonna look at them in details a lot in this chapter but believe me there's one whole chapter there's one whole chapter devoted for this and usually this chapter is intermediate too now if you really want to see this I, I do have the chapter on my YouTube but okay so if you have investments investments depending on how you classify your investments you could classify it as trading you can classify the investments as available for sale or you could classify the investments as held to maturity so 
if it's held to maturity the only type of investments you could have is that because that the only thing that mature you would report this as amortized cost so as far as you're concerned for this chapter you report it at cost okay the classification could be current or non-current so that could be a bond so if you have money you could have invest some money in bonds and that investments could be current or non-current if it's it's going to mature within 12 months then the bond is current if it's going to mature in five years it's non-current now you could also have investments in stocks and bonds so you could have stocks stocks and bonds and you could classify them for trading trading means what trading means you're gonna buy and sell them for profit purposes in the short term you report those investments at fair value and because you're planning to sell them in the short term they are considered current current assets and this is the short term investment section available for sale securities you could have available for sale available for sale means means not trading you're not gonna trade them not for trading in the short term and not HTM HTM is held to maturity so it's not this category it's not this category what's left is available for sale kind of a default you could have both debt and equity which is stocks and bonds they are reported at fair value they could be current or non-current and what's what's the difference between what's the difference between um, trading and available for sale they do sound the same between this and this they do sound the same but they're not the way they are reported the way we report the uh, gains and losses is different between the two we'll worry about this later on in another chapter and this is an example of um, short-term investments for Intuit so this is if you look at their balance sheet this is their cash and cash equivalent and they have short-term investments and definitely 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 the company will need to show you what are their short-term investments they don't have to give you a detail but they have to give you some sort of a summary so the following schedule summarize the estimated fair value of our short-term investments they are all available for sale that's their category and I used to do this for a company where I had have to list their prepare the schedule when I use when I used to prepare their financial statements they have corporate notes uh, so they invest they lend some money to corporations they have municipal bonds they invested some money in mus municipal bonds and they have government securities and I'm assuming that the, the, these all add up yeah this should be an eight so this is this is older investments older short-term investments so they, they don't have stocks for one thing if you notice here they don't have stocks mostly bonds and borrowing they don't it seems very conservative this is into it this is the company that creates um, turbo tax and QuickBooks this is the company that pretty much drove H&R Block out of business but yes into it they really do a good good job okay receivables so the company will have to show the receivable most categories uh, of receivable should be shown on the balance sheet or the related notes on and the related notes so comp a company should should clearly identify anticipated losses due to uncollectibles so if the company thinks they will not be collecting certain amount of receivables they have to tell you how much is it okay this is the you remember this this is called bad debt expense this is as a result of the bad debt expense they have to show you the allowance amount amount and nature of any non-trade receivable generally speaking when you sell your product and you sell it on account it's considered a trade receivable so when, you, when we say receivable what we mean is trade receivable okay so if the company has non trade receivable so what could be some non trade receivable well it could be an income tax income tax refund so th the company filed for a refund and they're waiting for their money it's a receivable but it's a non non trade it has nothing to do with their operation it could be a lawsuit they want a lawsuit and they are waiting to be paid it's a non-trade receivable also they have to show you if there's any receivable that's being held as collateral because what companies can do they can take the receivables and do what pledge it pledge it like any other asset for a loan so if they have any of these receivables pledged as a loan then they have to show you that is the case that is the case and they have to disclose it in their financial statements so this is the receivable for Stanley Black and Decker so this is the receivable and notice it says net net means what net of the allowance okay this is how much they expect to receive in cash expect 
to receive in cash okay maybe the, the gross is higher but this is how much they expect to receive in cash okay and here the notice here if you look at the node B they're showing you how much is trade how much it's trade note where they're lending money for, to operate the business other account receivable other means other things that they're waiting and it's a substantial amount this is the gross the gross is 1,473,000 notice the gross obviously is higher this is the gross whoops this is the gross amount this is the gross amount minus the allowance minus the allowance for doubtful account minus the allowance gives us the net and this is the amount the net is the amount that we show on the income statement just give me one moment please okay there we go we're back in business now okay so this is the amount that we show on the income statement okay the net amount as far as receivable is concerned um, inventory when we have the inventory we have to tell you how are we reporting the inventory for example lower of cost or market and most companies use this method what is this we're gonna have a whole chapter about inventory you would look at it later uh, which cost flow assumption are they using are they using FIFO LIFO the weighted average specific identification any method they are using they have to disclose it and what we have in front of us a uh, a bot laboratory laboratories so they have finished product work and process and material and most manufacturing companies they have three types of inventory manufacturing companies they will have material work and process and finished goods so this is their total inventory and this is the note and you always have to disclose your inventory method inventories are stated at lower of cost or market using the FIFO basis first and first out okay again we, we would have a one full chapter about inventories prepaid expenses generally speaking they are not an important number they're usually a small amount in relationship to other assets and what's prepaid expenses prepaid expenses are payment of cash that's recorded as an asset because the service or the benefit will be received in the future you paid your rent you prepaid your rent you prepaid your insurance you prepaid your supplies you prepaid your advertisement or you prepaid your taxes so every time you make a cash payment before before you expense it because remember you have to make the ex record the expenses in the appropriate period so if you reported any expense before it's that expense is supposed to be incurred you just have to keep it as a prepaid expense okay and let's take a look maybe at a balance sheet that shows prepaid expense and here's prepaid expenses and other current expenses they blend them all together and usually it's not much to it it's not much to the prepaid expenses and this is for Hasbro and I believe they have a lot in relationship to their total asset that's around hmm, less more than 10 percent more than 10 percent okay a summary uh, basically uh, cash and other assets a company so what's the summary what's current assets this is the definition of current asset and he's this is the total current asset for a company a, a picture of a whole of the whole thing now we're gonna move from current assets obviously to non current assets and non current assets generally speaking we have securities which is um, a tangible fixed asset or PPNE special funds and non-consolidated subsidiaries or affiliate companies so we're gonna look at each one of them uh, separately again go through an overview what would the balance sheet looks like and eventually we're gonna find out you know how does it work so securities what are securities securities are investments but those investments are long-term remember we had short-term investments earlier we talked about short-term investments those are long-term investments not short terms bond common stock long-term notes we're gonna have tangible fixed asset under investments such as land held for speculation we're gonna have maybe a special fund sinking fund pension fund plant expansion fund or cash surrender value of life insurance and we're gonna have some time non-consolidated subsidiaries or affiliate companies again we're not gonna go through you know we're not gonna go through each through each one of those 
in details, which is going to give you an idea what type of assets a company could list under long term investments. Okay, so long term investments will usually will not include so will not include this category because trading is in the long in the short term. So it's either it will have investments available for sale or held to maturity, but it should not have trading securities generally speaking because the nature of trading securities is to trade it in the short term so this is an example of a company with investments an ABC company investment in UC Inc and they have a notes receivable as well as they have land held for speculation a sinking fund a pension fund and those are all investments for marketable securities Management intent determines current or non-current. So if you have stocks and bonds, how do you know if the stock or a bond is a current or a non-current? It all depends on the company's intent. Are they planning to hold them in the short term? Are they planning to sell them in the short term? Are they planning to hold them forever? Or it's someplace in between. This is how we determine if it's trading, held to maturity, or available for sale. So what else we could have under long-term investments? So we're looking at stocks. We could also have lend held for and notice here for speculation. Speculation means to make a profit. Why do we need to differentiate this? Because if you bought a piece of land, you know, the first thing you think about, well, it's a land, it's a property, plant and equipment. True. But sometimes the companies buy a piece of land as what? As a speculation speculation means what speculation means they want maybe to sell it if the prices go up so that's not really an investment for property plant and equipment because when we say property plant and equipment what we mean what we mean is it's going to be used in operation so this land it's not going to be used in operation okay so this is why we say it's held for speculation if it's held for speculation it's listed under investments. Now we could also have what's called the sinking fund, the pension fund, cash surrender value. Basically a sinking fund is when you put money away, you put money away for a purpose. And that purpose could be to retire a bond or for future plan. But usually you invest this money and it's invested in the long term and you cannot touch it. It's a sinking fund. A pension fund is when you promise your employee uh, pension, pension, uh, pension payments after they retire so well before you, before they retire you have to uh, create a fund and do what and finance this fund put money into that fund and invest that money for your employees when they retire so this is called a pension fund so you'll have different assets in that pension fund also you could have cash surrender value and life insurance you could have investments in life insurance for employees and the company what else do we have and we could also have under this categories investments in 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 consolidated subsidiaries so those are investments in other companies but we don't consolidate those companies so we have investments in other companies but we don't combine both companies together therefore we're showing the investment separately because if we combine them together then we will not show the investment here it will be combined with the main balance sheet so this is the Motorola long-term investment section. So notice they have equity investments, which is stocks. They have other investments and they have fair value adjustments to available for sale securities. You don't have to worry about this, this fair value adjustment, at least now. Uh, but later we're going to have chapter 17 will cover this topic. So chapter 17, we're going to talk about, you know, investments, how to account for investments. Okay. So the next thing on the balance sheet comes property, plant, and equipment. And obviously, what, what goes under property, plant, and equipment? Property, plant, and equipment are tangible, long-lived assets. So notice they are tangible. Tangible means you can touch them because we're going to have assets that we cannot touch. Okay? Tangible, long-lived assets used in regular operation or in, 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 the opera in operating the business. Okay? So what could be examples of property, plant, and equipment? Those could be land, but remember, not land held for speculation, building, machinery, furniture tool, and waste and resources such as minerals. So those are the assets that we consider them property, plant, and equipment. And sometimes you know them as P, P and E. Sometimes they are called fixed asset. I'm not sure if they're called something else, but those are the two names that I can think of, P, P and E, and fixed asset. Maybe they're called something else. Um, 
with the exception of land with the exception of land with the exception of land a company must either depreciate or deplete if it's a natural resources these assets so we have to eventually expense them depreciate them and deplete them means expense them and expense depreciation expense means allocate the cost to period benefited to period benefited okay so this is what we mean by depreciation so we have to eventually expense them okay now why don't we depreciate land let's just talk about this because to depreciate something you have to assign a life a number of years and land is considered to have indefinite life or unlimited life that's why when we have an unlimited life when we determine and an asset has an unlimited life then you cannot depreciate you cannot allocate the cost over the period benefit because remember depreciation is taking the cost and allocated over period benefit well the period is unlimited so how could you allocate how can you allocate the cost over an unlimited period of time so that's why land has unlimited life therefore it's not depreciable and this is an example of um, a balance sheet with property plant and equipment building land machinery capital leases leasehold improvement accumulated depreciation this is the contra asset account and basically what the company will have to do they'll have to disclose the basis it value property plant and equipment and if, if we're using US gap let me tell you what the basis are the basis is the cost basis it's very simple when we buy property plant and equipment we keep it at cost and uh, we have to disclose for example we may have a schedule of you know of the buildings of the major buildings that we have okay uh, maybe we need to talk about a little bit about the machinery and equipment how do we depreciate the machinery and the equipment uh, you know how do we classify each assets in what in what group so on and so forth how do we come up with this if there is a lien if there is a lien against that machinery or that land or that building we need to disclose this so we, we would we would need additional disclosure at least which depreciation method we are using too because because we are depreciating those assets so we need to tell the users are we using the straight line accumulated deep, uh, accelerated depreciation makers or whatever method we are using not makers makers for tax purposes okay also uh, well this is the uh, this is the property plant and equipment for Mattel. Mattel is the company that manufacture Barbie dolls. So they have land, building, machinery and equipment, leases, leasehold improvements, total assets, less accumulated depreciation. Then they have tools, dies and molds, net amount, then net property plant and equipment. Okay. So this is an example of a company property plant and equipment. Once again, they'll have to do additional disclosure, additional disclosure uh, about those property plant and equipment. Okay. Intangible assets. We're going to have a whole chapter about actually property plant and equipment and intangible asset. I know we're going through this. It seems as I'm going through the index of the textbook because every topic you're covering now, we're going to cover in details in another chapter. One whole chapter for property plant and equipment one whole chapter about intangibles, one whole chapter about investments, one whole chapter about inventory. I know we're going through them now, but eventually we're going to learn the details of each one of them. So what are intangible assets? Intangible assets are assets that lack physical substance and are not financial instruments. In other words, they are not stocks or bonds and they lack physical uh, physical existence. Okay, what are some examples of um, of intangible asset goodwill which we'll talk about later patent trademark franchise and copyright and if you watch loan sharks and hopefully you do they, they always ask them if they have an idea that they patent this idea because when you patent an idea that's considered an asset okay now we're gonna learn later you know how, how do you put the patent on the books how much you can and cannot if you bought it or if you created yourself but but a patent is an idea then it's a uh, it's an asset trademark for example if you see the apple phone it has the apple that's the trademark for the iphone it's worth a lot why because trademark 
uh, have a market value so if, if someone sees the Apple sign they trust the product because the product is reputable so that's why it's important the franchise for example if you operate a McDonald or a subway once someone sees the signs they most probably they will stop by they'll trust the name copyrights for books and songs so um, so you will protect the uh, author protect the author's uh, copyrights um, we're gonna see later that certain um, certain uh, certain intangibles have limited life and others will have unlimited life and when you have unlimited life for an asset you will test it for impairment for example goodwill has an unlimited life okay uh, and limited life you amortize amortize is the same thing as depreciation but it's for intangible assets you don't depreciate intangible assets you amortized intangible assets and let's take a look at this example we have Patrick Corporation adjusted trial balance contained the following uh, the following assets prepaid rent goodwill franchise fees receivable franchises patent trademark prepare the intangible section so which one of those are intangible and which one of those are not intangible so let's take a look at this all right uh, t -t 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 prepaid prepaid rent prepaid rent is not intangible remember prepaid rent is a current asset goodwill is an intangible asset now what is goodwill because again I said I'm not gonna cover goodwill but uh, goodwill is when one company buys another company and let's assume one company let me just explain this real quick company a buys company B and when, when company A buys company B they would look at company B let's do it on the uh, let's do it real quick here so what they do is they look at company B and they would say company B they have assets of 450,000 and this is the fair market value they they in other words this is how much th those assets are worth today at fair market value on the market and they would look at their liabilities so because when you buy a company you buy both their assets and their liabilities and the fair market value of their liabilities let's make it 100,000 so the equity or this business is worth on fair market value three hundred and fifty thousand dollar fair market value so this is how much this business is worth three hundred and fifty thousand here comes company A and company A actually pays to buy it they pay um, let's assume they pay 500,000 so they pay 500,000 for something that's worth 350 so when they journalize the entry they will debit the assets that they purchased they bought assets 450 worth they were credit their liabilities because they did add 100,000 of liabilities when they bought this company they will credit cash because they paid cash 500,000 now what's left what's left is 150 because this entry those two and this is 600,000 and this is only 450 the difference between the two is called goodwill now what is goodwill goodwill is the excess amount that we paid over the fair market value that we cannot assign to any asset that we purchased so in other words we paid 500,000 500,000 is 150,000 more than what the what the company is worth now why did we pay this the question is why did we pay this well we really don't know why or we cannot attach this additional value to an asset it could be because of the location of the company it could be because of this company's connection to the government it could be because of their customer base but certain things that we cannot assign specifically assign so therefore we call it goodwill so it's that everything else that uh, everything else that uh, that we cannot explain okay that we paid extra we cannot explain we cannot put on the financial statements so goodwill indeed is an intangible asset so goodwill is an intangible asset franchise fees receivable don't be misled this is receivable this is an asset we are waiting for two thousand dollar nope franchises yes 
franchise is an intangible because you paid a fee patent is an intangible basically a patent is it's, it's extremely important especially for pharmaceutical companies that's an intangible trademark are also intangible so those the four are intangibles which are goodwill franchise patent and trademark total of 140,000 this is the intangible again we'll see this in chapter 11 in details later on intangible asset this is for PepsiCo so they have goodwill a lot of goodwill they buy other companies that's why they create goodwill they have trademark and they have other identifiable intangibles so I don't want you to think that this trademark is the PepsiCo trademark because when you create your own trademark you don't put it on the books we'll talk about that later on but this is those this is a sample of intangible assets okay the companies could also have other assets okay they may include long-term prepaid expenses non-current receivable assets and special funds deferred income taxes which we'll see that later on in chapter 19 this is the dreaded chapter 19 no one likes this chapter Prep property held for sale restricted cash or other securities so those are if it doesn't fit anywhere you could put them here if you'd like to but remember property held for sale it could also be long-term investments but this is the category in other words the company will always have this option so if they don't know where to put an asset it's like it's not long term it's not current it's not PPE, it's not property plant and equipment it's not intangible well if it's not none of those guess what you could put it under other assets so you will always have this this category okay for example if you have long-term prepaid expenses well it's not current but it's not it doesn't fit any any other category so you put it you put it here okay okay so this is an example of um, other assets for this company they have prepaid pension cost and they have deferred income tax okay that's that's what they have again this is the assets that don't fit anywhere so we have create a category the next thing we look at is liabilities and liabilities are a little bit straightforward because they only consist of two categories either current liabilities or non-current liabilities so it's either classify as current or non-current and how do we determine if, an, if a liability is a current or a non-current well um, a current liability is a liability that reasonably expect to liquidate either through the use of current assets or the creation of current liability within one year assuming one year is longer than the operating cycle so any liability that we expect to pay off within the next 12 months is considered a current liability so that's the liability that would expect expect us to liquidate either a current asset which is cash or the creation of a current liability basically refinance it ask the ask the creditor to give us more time examples are notes payable short-term note accounts payable which is accounts payable is when you buy on account okay when you buy on account accrued compensation this is the amount that you owe for your employees unearned revenue somebody paid you up front you haven't performed the work income taxes payable taxes that you owe and current maturities of long-term debt we'll talk about this maybe in a moment later on current maturities of long-term debt now this is an example for Halliburton company this is their current liabilities notice short-term notes and most companies they will have those two for sure they'll have some sort of a short-term loan and accounts payable and also they would have accrued employee compensation and benefit because if they have employees they're gonna have they're gonna accrue some wages unearned revenue maybe somebody paid them up front income taxes payable accrued special charges so those are some typical and here they have a large other current liabilities which is they'll have to explain this in the notes we don't know what this is but this is those are the typical current liabilities that you will see for a company the next thing we look at is long-term liabilities long-term liabilities long-term liabilities are obligation that do not reasonably expect to be liquidated within the operating cycle which is we assume to be one year so those liabilities that will stay with us that will stay with us longer than one year longer than one year okay like what like long-term debt obligation capital lease of a capital lease and deferred income taxes those are liabilities that will stay with us longer than one longer than one period or 
those liabilities we would require to reissue long-term long-term debt to refinance them to refinance them okay you could read this article it's about before the dot-com bubble concerns about liquidity and solvency led creditors of many dot-com companies to demand more assurance that these companies could pay their bills when due a key indicator for creditors is is the sum of the vendors demanded that their dot-com customers sign notes stating that the goods shipped to them would serve as the collateral for the transactions okay so really you if you really think about it your suppliers the company that supply goods and services they're the best people that knows how to evaluate a company because think about it when a company runs into trouble the first thing they do they will start to ask their suppliers to give them more time or to uh, to give them more time to pay or they will even stop paying altogether so the, your suppliers know knows a lot about the company and that's why a company like Apple when they deal with a the supplier they make sure they have a secretive agreement between them and the supplier and the supplier cannot cannot breathe a word about how much they are supplying Apple there has to be a secret uh, <laughs> another recent bubble in the real estate market created a working capital and liquidity crisis for no less than a company that's called Bear Stern, which is gone now. Um, Bear Stern was one of the biggest investors in mortgage-backed securities, but when the housing market cooled off, the value of the collateral basically went down. Okay. Uh, for example, when when a reported when a re, when a report predicted that Amazon working capital turned negative, the company's vendor began to explore steps that would get, ensure Amazon would pay them. Securities dropped dramatically, which is their stock, and the market began to question Bear Stearns' ability to pay its obligation. Um, well, again, short-term liabilities are extremely important for any company because if you cannot, uh, if you cannot meet your obligation, it's a problem. It's really a problem. Now let's take a look at this example um, included in Adams company December 31st 2014 trial balance are showing the following account accounts payable pension asset liability pension pension asset slash liability discount on notes payable unearned revenue bonds payable salaries and wages payable interest payable so that asking us to prepare the long-term liability section so which assets are considered long-term well I am going to tell you right now, accounts payable is not, so this is not, and then we cross accounts payable, the easy one that we can easily cross, accounts payable is not. Pension asset liability, yes, pension usually, spe generally speaking, when a company has a pension liability, it's not, it's definitely not in the short term because this is planning for the future, so this is planning for the future. Discount on bonds payable, generally speaking, bonds payable are long-term debt and the discount on them is a, is a is a contra liability which is also long-term debt unearned revenue generally speaking no one pays you and they expect you to perform longer than a year bonds payable is bonds payable is a long-term debt salaries and wages payable that's a no-no that's that's a current liability because no one will wait for you one year to pay them interest payable generally speaking banks they want their money and the government don't wait longer than a year so the three long-term liabilities are pension liability bonds and discount and discount is a contra liability so it reduces this amount and the other ones that I crossed out you might be asked what what are the current liabilities and those will be the current liabilities all right let's take a look at this example and this is an example for the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, their uh, current liabilities, then their long-term liabilities, and they'll say C note. And here, what they do is they break down their long-term liabilities. They have debt consist of 9.5 senior notes. So this they pay 9.5 percent on this note. Uh, they have a mortgage and other notes that they pay 9.9. .9. They they borrowed from the bank this much at 9.7 and commercial papers at 9.4 and I remember when I used to prepare I, I, I remember certain things <laughs> really well um, for when you have that you have to list all your uh, all your all the classification of your debt so that's one of the things that you have to disclose show me the breakdown of your debt and what is your average interest rate now 
they can either put it there or you could someone can easily calculate the average interest rate that this company pays now you have this is your total long-term debt then what you do when you have what you do after you calculate your total long-term debt you take out you then you deduct the current portion this is the current portion of the long-term debt so this is so the total debt that this company owes is 314 million 931 this is the total debt total long-term debt of this amount 60 million 619 this amount here which is I'm gonna highlight in blue highlight in a different color this amount here is due the next 12 months so the total debt that's gonna be with them later on after they make the payments next year is 254 million 312 okay and I used to do this a lot when I you know when I was in practice uh, well, I still practice a little bit, but I no longer have clients that have a lot of debt. But for companies, they might have six, seven different debts, maybe sometime more. But this is what you have to do. You have to break it down and you have to show if there's any collateral against that debt. Okay. The, the last section of the uh, balance sheet is the owner's equity section. We really not, we're not going to really get into this because we're going to, look at this later on in the tales when we get to chapter sorry when we get to chapter 16 but it's let's cover what we need to cover when the company issues stocks they have to show if the company has a par value so the par value or the stated value of the shares issued so if there's a par value let's see if there's an example Oh, there's an example for Las Vegas Sands Corporation. For example, the par value is 0 0.001. So what does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything. But if there's a par value, they have to disclose the par value. They also have to disclose how many shares are authorized. So they are authorized to issue 50 million shares. Um, of those 50 million, 3.6 million are issues and issued and outstanding. It means they are sold. Actually, this is the preferred stock. The common stock, the par value is 0 0.001, the same as the preferred. They have a billion shares authorized, 707 million of them, I'm rounding, seven, 707 million are issued, okay? And this is the dollar amount, this is the dollar amount. So those are the common stock. Additional paid in capital is what the investors put into the company. So those accounts here, preferred stock common stock and paid in capital those are called capital contribution and capital contribution is what the investors invested in the company okay so this those three accounts shows that then so this is capital stock we looked at you know the par value then additional paid in capital those are the capital contribution so those two are considered capital represent capital contribution then what happened is the company will have another major category which is called retained earnings whoops sorry okay and retained earning is the corporation let's do a different color retained earnings is the corporation and distribute earnings since the company started so when the company makes a profit they can either distribute it or keep it the amount that they keep from the earning is called retained earnings so this is usually another main top main main component of the balance sheet the the equity section this is so this is the first main section which is contributed capital I just highlighted in red this is what the investors put into the company then the retained earning is another major component of the uh, of the equity section now you're saying so what's that in between what's that in between that's called accumulated other comprehensive income we'll talk about that later on it has to do with comprehensive income it has to do with certain items that bypass the income statement for now well we'll look at those later on just know that there's something called other comprehensive income generally speaking is is not a large component okay and sometimes the company might have non-controlling interest non-controlling interest is the is the portion of the equity of the subsidiary not wholly owned by the reporting company so basically what happened 
at some point what company is this Las Vegas Sands maybe they bought another they bought another casino and they purchased 95% of that casino some other casino so there's 5% that they not own so 5% of the company they don't own so they have to show the non-controlling interest the interest that they don't own which is represent that much why is it an equity you don't have to worry about this just know the non-controlling interest you know know what it is it's the portion of the equity of the subsidiaries not wholly owned by the reporting company just know what it is eventually you will take advanced accounting and you will know exactly how to calculate this component okay and uh, let's take a look at this example and basically what we need to find out is um, a classification on the balance sheet where where do these items goes on the balance sheet well let's start with the first one if you have an investments and a preferred stock so you bought stocks well think about it investments well we need more information because remember an investments could be short term and investments could be short term or long-term investments so for this it could be current or long-term investments treasury stock which we did not talk about it should have been listed here under equity treasury stock is an equity and treasury stock to be more specific it's a contra equity contract contra equity what is treasury stock is when the company buys back its own stock when it buys back its own stock common stock we already know it's part of stockholders equity cash dividend payable the word payable tells you what it's a liability and what type of a liability when the company promised to pay dividend they don't wait a year longer than a year to pay it usually they pay it fairly quickly so it's a current liability accumulated depreciation this is a contra asset and it goes under the property plant and equipment PP and E it's a long-term property plant and equipment interest payable we, we know from payable it's a liability and when you owe someone interest they want it fairly quickly a deficit a deficit and this is what they mean deficit in retained earnings and remember retained earnings is that amount that we keep the profit but sometimes what happen we distribute all the profit and more than the profit that we incurred over the years and what happened when we do this or we keep an uncurring losses and the retained earning goes to zero then it goes negative zero once the retained earnings goes below zero we call it deficit now trading securities this is easy trading securities is a current asset and unearned revenue remember unearned revenue is the money that they paid us before we perform the service when someone pays you this money they don't wait longer than a year for you to perform so it's a current liability let's see what we have prepare the classified balance sheet uh, using the report and the account format so when we prepare a balance sheet we could use the account form or the report form okay so the AICP indicate that all of the 500 survey companies either use the report form or the account for a form sometimes collectively refer as the, as the customary form okay that's fine this is the report form the present the presentation of the balance sheet meets the objective of the financial reporting to provide information about the entities claims and resources obviously this is what we were talking about this is the report for format at the end of this recording i'm going to invite you again to visit my website farhatlectures.com please like this recording share it and if you are again if you have a cpa prep course that's fine you can keep your cpa prep course but you might need additional explanation i do provide you with additional explanation your cpa exam is 20 to 40 year investment don't shortchange yourself my subscription is nominal based on the value and based on the long-term investment that you're going to be making in yourself by passing the exam so go ahead pass the exam put it behind you study hard and most importantly stay safe